Alrighty, welcome back to my channel. Today I've got another 3D printer review, this time looking at the Cocoon Create Model Maker. This is a fairly unique printer in that it's only being sold by Aldi stores in Australia. It's on sale again this, this Wednesday, so if you're interested, jump over to the store then. Hopefully this review will help some of you decide if you're sitting on the fence or not, whether this could be a good first printer for you or not. The most attractive thing that most people will be interested in is that the price is $300 Australian. That gets you a fully assembled, tested 3D printer from Aldi with their magnificent 60 day return policy. So it's about as safe a gamble as you can make. Um, the only thing you need to do when you get it, unbox it, you need to just screw in the um, filament holder and then, then you're ready to go. So let's get into it. In the box, you get a range of different filaments, um, just some short lengths and a range of different uh, colors. It's, it's enough to get started with, but you're gonna have to buy some more full spools, but at least it gets you started. They include a few hex keys and miscellaneous hardware, nothing significant, but they do include some spare um, bed sheets, which are consumables, so that's really nice to have those. They actually give you a really nice, fairly comprehensive um, printed instruction manual, which is rare to say the least in most things these days, which is really nice. They give you a good quick start guide and a whole bunch of cable ties as well. I don't know what they're for, but they included them, so we'll be. They also include a micro SD card, and the micro SD card has some sample prints, as well as having all the software you need to run and install on your computer to get started. Um, that's Cura for those of you who are familiar with 3D printer software. And they actually include a profile for this printer on the um, micro SD card too. That's a nice bonus too. Aldi is also selling filament as well. The filament they sell is about 35 Australian dollars. You can buy other filament elsewhere, so don't feel you have to buy their stuff. I recommend uh, Torwell Australia. Their filament is being really good, I've had no problems with it, had good consistent quality. Um, I've tried a range of different suppliers, I found even some of the Australian made suppliers, their quality to be a bit variable. These guys have had good luck with so far, so there you go. One of the other accessories that are included is a drill bit. Um, from what I've heard from people who've tried to use that, it tends to break off inside the nozzle when you're trying to clean the nozzle, so really it causes more problems than it solves. Um, something I recommend is just go visit your local um, acupuncture centre and ask them for some of their acupuncture needles. Um, those needles are very flexible, they're the right size for these nozzles. You can also buy the, um, acupuncture needles in small quantities uh, from other suppliers as well. I'll, I'll put a link through to where I got these ones um, in the description below. If we go around the printer, at the front you have a rotary dial which clicks in as a button. You've got a uh, small but clear backlit LCD display. On the right side you've got your spool and your spool holder. On the back you've got a power switch and a power input. On the top you've got your extruder um, with a gear. That gear drives the filament through the Bowden tube and into the hot end where you've got your heated nozzle that extrudes the plastic out onto the print surface. Um, the print head moves left and right, that's your x-axis. You've got your print bed that moves forward and backward, that's your y-axis. And this whole print arm this whole print arm moves up and down as your z-axis. The bed, it's a manual leveling system. You have these nuts you can turn and that'll adjust the bed. It's really important whenever you're 3D printing to make sure you get your first layer height right. And with these, uh, these nuts are fairly easy, they're sturdy, they're smooth, they're easy to grip. It's not too hard to do it, even though it is manual. The main limitation of this printer that people need to be aware of is that it doesn't have a heated bed. What that means is this printer is really only suitable for printing PLA. Um, PLA is a good material, it's easy to print with, things come out reasonably cleanly, um, it doesn't warp very much at all, and the prints are reasonably strong. However, PLA is a fairly brutal material, so if you're looking for something that's going to be experiencing high loads, you may find that you'd like to print in say a PETG, ABS, or a range of other materials. And because this printer doesn't have a heated bed, it makes it very hard to get those materials to stay stuck to the bed. Often if you try to print a different material, the print will start, but then the print will come off and detach halfway through, ruining your print. So really, unless you're happy to buy, happy to use just PLA, don't get this printer. That being said, you can do a lot of good stuff with PLA, and it's probably the material that I've used the most over the last couple of years. The printer being released at Aldi this Wednesday has one major difference to this printer. They're replacing the bed material with a magnetic bed system. 
what that means is, rather than peeling your print off the bed directly, first of all, you can peel off the top magnetic sheet and then peel the print off from that sheet. Um, I recently did another review on this magnetic bed system. Um, my last video I did, actually, I really like it. I think it's a really good solution. And I think it's really good, especially if you have kids and you wanna use this printer with them. Um, one of the biggest dangers, um, biggest hazards of 3D printers is actually the tools. So trying to remove your printer, remove your print from the bed, most people use a spatula. And there's a big risk if you are trying to um, scrape off your print and you're doing it towards you, if your spatula goes into your hand or into yourself in other ways, it can cause real damage. So avoiding the use of a spatula with a magnetic bed system, I think it's a really great move. One of the good things about this printer is that it's really compact and will fit in just about any space. However, this brings a downside in that it has a particularly small build volume. The printer has a build volume of 120 millimeters on the x-axis to 135 millimeters on the y-axis to 100 millimeters high. And that 100 millimeters high is particularly limiting. Um, it means that some of the prints you do, you'll have to scale them down to, in order to get them to fit on this printer. I don't think it's a major limitation. There's many parts that I've printed that would fit fine on this size, but it will limit you from doing things like large cosplay masks, or you might have to divide some of your prints up into multiple smaller sections to print them like a jigsaw puzzle, perhaps. Actually using the printer is fairly easy. On the micro SD card is all the software you need to install to run the, so to run the printer. Um, they include a profile for the software for this printer. Um, all you need to do is load your 3D file into the software, which is called Cura. Cura will then convert those, those files into motor commands and movement commands for this printer, which are called G-code files. Those G-code files you put on a micro SD card, and then you can pop that in the, in the printer and choose print and away it goes. The main thing you have to do before you get started is to perform a bed leveling routine. And the menu will actually be able to guide you through that, doing that. This involves the nozzle moving to all corners of the bed and adjusting the height to make sure that the first layer is directly onto the bed surface. Unfortunately for me, my first print out of the box didn't go so well. A long story short, the problem I had was the filament was grinding against the extruder gear. The extruder gear is rather blunt and the spring pressure is rather low, which meant that the filament was just being worn away in one place rather than being pushed down the Bowden tube. I um, called up support, they have a phone number, they answered on like the second ring. I got through to a technical person straight away, there was no, I'll put you through to that department. And they answered and gave some really good technical suggestions. So I was really impressed with the support. However, in my case, um, I did some more troubleshooting and I found that the, um, the gear itself was the problem. Like I said, it was too blunt. I replaced this gear with a new one that's much sharper and I've had much, much better results since then. I've had no more grinding, no more filament slipping and my prints have been coming out beautifully. Um, that replacement gear cost $1 from China delivered. So it's not a massive expense. It's still annoying that a brand new printer out of the box has this flaw. Um, I did a poll on the model maker Facebook group and about half the people said that they had had some problems with grinding a filament. Maybe mine was an unlucky duckling, but even so it shouldn't happen to any of them out of the box. If it does happen, this is how you can fix it by replacing that extruder gear. For $1, I'll give them a pass on that. It's a cheap, easy replacement. The print quality itself is really, really good, really excellent. I'll do some close-ups, um, but the print quality, all the layers are really consistently laid down. The detail on some of the prints is really, really good. Um, the only thing that lets them down is what's known as salmon skinning. This is an artifact of the motor stepper drivers in the printer that don't have a particularly perfect waveform. And this causes patterns on the print surface, um, regular patterns that you can see and this print as um, these diagonal lines. Um, that's the only downside I can see to that, to this, um, to the print quality on this printer. Um, the print profile they su supply is really good. I'm actually trying to do my best to get a print profile for this printer built into the next generation of Cura, version 3.6, hopefully coming out soon. So fingers crossed you could just plug this into a new version of Cura and have it work out of the box as well. In terms of alternative options, if you're just starting out, you're probably looking for an, a low budget printer. 
Most people start out in this price range too. Um, however, there's a lot of really bad stuff out there. The like ANET A8 is probably one of the most popular printers because of its low price, but the acrylic frame is very fragile, flimsy, and prone to being brutal and breaking. The software and the firmware lacks really important safety features and has burnt several people's houses down. Um, and the flaws and the problems you run into will turn your hair gray. I think it's worth spending some more money to get a better quality printer overall. This printer is a good starter printer, I think. Um, it has some limitations, but it doesn't compromise on quality where it counts. There are some other options out there, and I'll suggest some. One would be the Creality uh, Ender 3. It's a very popular printer. There's a good support community out there. Um, however, I, in my opinion, they cut a few too many quick few too many corners for me to say it's a high quality printer. I'd say the print results are not as good as the print results you get out of the model maker itself. Another printer is the AlphaWise U20. I'm going to do a review on that one soon, so that'll be coming out shortly. And that's a really good all-rounder for a little bit more money again, but I think it's worth the added investment to get a heated bed, a bigger print volume, and a more flexible printer overall. Um, the print quality is almost as good as as the model maker, not quite as good. Um, but overall, I think that it might be a better value option. If you don't want to spend some time troubleshooting and you just want something to work out of the box, the model maker is probably a great buy. It's hard to find a lot of printers that don't have problems out of the box, even though the model maker did have its own problems. Um, but I think that the model maker and the really good support you can get from Aldi, you can just take it back and get another one the same day and you're up and running again. It's a, it's a really good system they have there. In short, I like the model maker a lot. I'm disappointed that I had a problem with the extruder gear, but it's an easy fix. Um, for me, I think I wouldn't buy this printer because I like printing with PETG. It's a nice material, it has many benefits. But if I was just getting started again, or if I wanted to give this as a gift to somebody for Christmas, or if I just wanted to um, see if I enjoyed 3D printing, this could be a really good option. It's low cost, it's reliable. Um, I think you can't go too wrong, honestly. Um, there's a group on Facebook you can join if you're interested in talking to others about this printer. Um, I'll link some more useful links in the description below, all the products I mentioned. Um, if you have one of the older Cocoon Create model makers, you can actually buy, you can actually buy this uh, magnetic uh, bed system and you can apply it to your printer. So you don't actually have to miss out on anything at all. That's all I have for today. If you have any feedback, comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the, in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and supporting my channel. Have a great day.